So we're going to start out in the middle of our paper with a circle about the size of a grapefruit or softball. And go around multiple times. This is key to good circles repetition. Going around you're able to fix your flat spots, your indents, anything that makes it not a circle. You don't want to worry about it being perfect. It takes a lot of practice to make a perfect circle. The guidelines are there to tell us where we put the pieces of the character. Like eyes, nose, mouth, etc., etc., etc. We need to know where the center of his head is. Well, he's going to be looking off to the left, so we're going to do a curved guideline, making a crescent moon shape on the inside of your circle. And we'll go across the bottom of your circle with a horizontal guideline, as if it were a ball. So what we're going to do is duckbill next. And uh, duckbills can be kind of tricky, so just do the best job that you can. I'm going to start with the bridge of his bill, which is just like the bridge of your nose. I'm going to go right over where the horizontal guideline is touching the circle. I'm going to draw a short line running into the center guideline. You can curve through that guideline and down to the horizontal guideline, so you've created a little bridge. We're going to continue that line to the right. I'm going to dip down a little bit below that guideline, curve up on the inside of your circle, and then hook to the outside of your circle, make a little hook shape. This Donald's got a lot of little hook shapes. This particular little hook shape is his cheek. Inside the cheek, we're going to draw a little curve. It's going to go inside and outside of the circle. That is his dimple. Now the next line is the main part of his bill, and it's probably the hardest part of your entire drawing. So you, so you want to just uh, do your best at this. Uh, try it a couple times if you need to. But we're going to start right in the middle of the dimple. And follow the curve of the circle to the left. I'm going to leave the circle. As soon as I'm lined up at the bottom of the guideline, you're going to curve back up and curve out, stopping about an inch and a half away from the side of your circle. The main thing to remember here is you want to make sure you're curving down and back up. Don't curve down and down. That'll make them look like you got hit in the face of the frying pan. So you're going to take your pencil, lay it down on the left side of your circle, straight up and down, make sure you can see at least an inch and a half of line going past your bill. If you can't, then just simply draw it longer. Now to show the curve of the bill, we're going to draw a hook that's going to go around this line and shoot across the top, being parallel to the line below it. Now because his head is turned, that means everything on this side of the guideline is farther away from us, so everything is going to appear smaller, look a little bit different. So we're going to draw his other cheek, his other cheek is going to look like a letter C shape. The top letter C is touching the circle while the bottom is just hovering. You can connect that cheek to the bridge of the bill simply by just following that piece of the circle that we already drew. And then we're going to draw a little hook shape on the inside. It's going to curve out to the end of the bill, or the top of the bill. It should be straight across from the bridge of the bill. I'm going to draw him with his mouth closed, mostly because that's the best way to have Donald Williams with his mouth closed. You can actually understand him better that way. So we're going to follow the curve of the cheek around into the jawline, follow the exact same curve of the bill all the way around. So you get to the end, you will curve out slightly and curve back in, overlapping that line to the front and giving him a bottom lip. Right, so now we can take this time to hop in. I'm going to darken our lines for the duck bill. You just want to make sure that you don't draw through this line right here because the bottom lip is in front of that line. So do not touch that line right there. Other than that, go ahead and darken in the lines for the duckbill. Now back in the late 1930s, leading all the way into the 1950s, Donald was the most popular Disney character. He has sold Mickey and merchandise. He has more animated feature short cartoons under his belt than any other Disney character. In fact, he was so popular that Walt himself actually called him the Gable of their stable in reference to Clark Gable, who was the biggest movie star of the day. And in the height of Don's popularity in the early 1940s, he actually managed to do something no other Disney characters ever managed to do. That was to star from beginning to end in two back-to-back -back animated feature films. Uh, that was, of course, Saludos Amigos and The Three Caballeros. All right. I'm going to draw a little curve above the cheek. as a little muscle to hold that bill in place. Like so. His eyes are next. Uh, Donald has huge eyes. They're larger than any of the other Disney ducks. They're about a quarter larger than Daisy's eyes, a little bit larger than Scrooge's eyes, and they're five times larger than Huey, Dewey, and Louie's eyes. Uh, it's inside the dips in the bill right here, and they're shaped like dinosaur eggs. So very lightly, we're going to start right in here, 
curve up towards the top of the circle. I'm going to shoot down to that dip in the bill. Nice big dinosaur egg shape. His other eye is going to look a little bit different because his head's turned. It actually looks like a bent croquet wicket. If you're not sure what a croquet wicket is, play croquet, it's fun. And we're going to follow the curve of the circle up. I'm going to shoot down. It's a little bit smaller because it's farther away from us. Then we get the eyebrows. Uh, the eyebrows follow the same curve as the top of the eye. So we're going to start about a quarter of the way down the eye, curve up, and then the inside. So the other one just follows the top curve of the eye and leaves the circle a little bit at the top. Then his pupils. Uh, there are good ways to draw pupils and bad ways to draw pupils. A good way is to simply draw the whole shape. Some people get lazy they draw half circles or slanted lines. That makes characters cross-eyed or lazy. I look like their eyes are rolling in the back of their head. So to avoid that, all you have to do is draw the whole shape. So we're going to start just inside the eye on the right. Draw a nice, tall oval. And the other pupil, we're not going to see all of it because his head's turned away from us. It's going to be pushed against the inside of the eye. We still want to see that curve away from the side of the eye, though, or it'll make him lazy eye in that eye. We can go ahead and darken those lines in for the eyes and eyebrows and pupils. Then you turn your pencil to the side, use like a paintbrush, and shade in those pupils. The faster you shade with the side of your pencil, the more even your surface. You really don't ever want to use the tip of your pencil to shade. The only thing that'll do is frustrate you, take you forever, look really bad when you're done, you break your pencil and leave a couple on it. So if you want to avoid all that stuff, just use the side of your pencil and shade really, really fast. The great thing about shading like this is that you could literally just grab your pencil and flail your arm back and forth. If you come in contact with a piece of paper, you will make an even surface. It's just that easy. People tend to overthink shading. You don't need to overthink shading. Just go in there, get the job done quickly, efficiently, and it looks better than if you take your time, oddly enough. All right, up on top of his head, he's got uh, his feathers. He's just gonna run up there and scribble in some feathers, literally scribbling. You can uh, give him a little feather cowlick on the back of his head. You can darken those lines. Finish up the uh, tops and the sides of his head. Uh, Donald most, owes most of his existence to a man named Clarence Nash. Or Clarence Ducky Nash, as he was later known. Clarence was uh, 29 when he auditioned in front of Walt Disney doing a rendition of Mary Had a Little Lamb in a Funny Duck Voice. And Walt loved it so much that they hired him, created an entire character around him, and thus Donald Duck was born. He's actually imitating his pet goat and he had his growing up on a farm. So Donald's voice actually comes from a goat. Uh, he eventually retired and he passed the torch on to an animator for the company of Tony Anselmo. He's been doing the job since 1986. All right, we're gonna go ahead and give him his hat next. He's got that uh, French sailor beret. And we're gonna start where the feathers touch the uh, eyebrow. We're gonna do a short curve. And very light little curve just above those feathers or you can even go through them if you need to as long as you do it lightly just behind the other eyebrow. Do that. And we can darken that pretty much as soon as you get that in place. Top of the hat is actually really easy. It looks like a pinto bean, but all it is is two intersecting letter U shapes. So as long as you know your alphabet, you're golden. All right, so what we want to do is we want to start right where the hat band touches the eyebrow. And just very lightly, we're gonna curve up and back down. No bells and whistles to it. It's a letter U. You can even flip your paper upside down, look at it, and say, oh, yep, it's a letter U. Okay, I'm going to draw a second letter U overlapping the first and running it behind the first eyebrow. Okay, he's got his tassel. His tassel's a long letter W. I was just going to throw that off, off the back. A letter W it's coming off the side. And you can go ahead and darken those lines. Ever since Donald was created, he's played a big part in the world of comic books. And a lot of Donald's popularity in comics, most of it actually, comes from one man. 
His name was Carl Barks, and he's a Disney legend. He was known as the Duck Man or the Good Duck Artist. He created Scrooge McDuck and Gladstone Gander and Gerald Gearloose, the town of Duckburg, and wrote all those stories that were later adapted into DuckTales. All right, we're gonna finish up with his neck, and we're gonna attach it to the base of his skull, which is the best place that I could find to put it. So right where this guideline touches the circle, I'm gonna very lightly draw through the bill, and come out the bottom, make it darken the part from below the bill. Anytime you draw any Disney duck, the inside of their neck is always attached to the center guideline to their head. So you can follow the guideline down and then curve out, of course, very lightly through the bill. And once you get below the bill, 